This is the AK-47. If you're in bad places with bad people, this is a good friend to have with you. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is the final episode in our improved AK upgrade series. Here previously, we have installed the Midwest Industries Railed Handguard System, the Bushnell TRS-25, and a Tapco saw grip to just give us a little bit better grip on the rifle system here. Now, we've upgraded pretty much this portion of the rifle. This old laminated wood buttstock looks kind of strange hanging out here, in addition to the looks, because we really don't care about the way the rifle system looks. We have a non-adjustable buttstock that's really fixed to one length, so it doesn't matter if we are running with body armor, it doesn't matter if we are running with heavy winter gear, or if we're out at the range in a t-shirt like I am here, we don't have any way to adjust the buttstock to what we're wearing. Additionally, if we hand this to a smaller statured shooter or a larger, longer armed shooter, then we don't have any way to adjust this to them. So we'd like to go ahead and change that. And to do so, we are gonna install a Magpul Mo adjustable grip uh, or adjustable buttstock. This is a fairly low cost buttstock. They're not incredibly expensive, but it's a very high quality system. If you butt stroke something, you're not gonna worry about the stock shattering or the toe coming off or any of the other problems that you have there. Now, we've got this lovely AR-15 adjustable buttstock, but how do we get that on the back of our rifle here? Well, of course, we're gonna use a regular buttstock tube, and all these parts are just parts we picked up from Brownells. So we're gonna use a regular buttstock tube, but in order to get that on there, we've got this nifty little adapter from Rifle Dynamics. And this is a very well-machined aluminum adapter, and we have two pieces to it. We have the first piece here that is actually gonna bolt to the trunnion in the back of the receiver here. And once we get that bolted in, we have a much more familiar looking adapter here that will accept our regular AR-15 extension tube. And actually the way this adapter is designed, it will accept several different types of AR stocks. Pretty much anything that will fit on the back of a regular AR-15 should fit on here. So if you wanted to put a regular A2 length rifle stock on, you could do so. If you wanted to put a Magpul UBR on, you could do that as well. So it gives you a whole lot of options and it's a really well machined piece. It comes with all the mounting hardware that you're gonna need. And luckily, we have a leftover tube of Loctite from when we installed our handguard. These things are great. Keep them around, don't throw them in the trash after you've got done installing the last item because you will probably need them again. As with all of our previous build episodes, first thing we need to do is make sure that the rifle is clear. Pull the bolt back, we are going to visually and physically inspect to make sure that there's no ammunition in the rifle. Release the bolt and allow it to go forward, and we're going to field strip the rifle. And set all that good stuff aside. Now we have clear access to the rear of the rifle, and we know that the rifle is clear and unloaded. We are gonna start while we have the rifle sitting here just like this and remove the two screws on the top of the buttstock, securing it to the trunnion. Now I would suggest that you make sure you know which order you remove these screws in in case you ever want to put your wood buttstock back on the rifle again. And these screws really are not precision machine screws. They're pretty ugly sometimes. So I like to make sure I remember which hole in the stock they came out of, and I put them right back in that hole in the stock. So if I decide to reuse it later on, then I'm not wallowing out those holes all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and release our butt stock here. And I'm gonna take a regular large heavy duty flat blade screwdriver. And we have a hole down in the receiver trunnion right here that you can kind of see and you can see the nose of the buttstock in it. We're gonna stick the screwdriver down in there 
and we're just going to start working the stocks to the rear and you can see I've started it right here and we're just going to use the screwdriver to pry the stock to the rear and it pops that butt stock out very nicely makes it real easy to remove the butt stock no pounding no banging uh, sometimes these things can be a little bit different dimensions you can have some issues with that now we are going to get our rifle dynamics uh, block here and grab our screws and when we look at our screws put them in my vise here so I don't drop them and lose them we have two different types we have a long cap head screw and then we have a short countersunk screw we are going to use the short countersunk screws because they match up with the countersunk holes in the trunnion we're going to install our adapter this way with the tail pointing backwards we will go ahead and slide it in and we're going to start that rear screw And to do this portion of the installation, we are going to need a 3 30 seconds hex bit. And we're just going to use it by hand right now to get everything lined up. I mentioned this in one of our earlier segments, but because AKs are not often precision machines, sometimes there's some wide variants, we are going to dry fit everything first, and then we'll go back and we'll remove it and we will lock tight everything so that it doesn't come loose under vibration later. So we're just going to place those two screws exactly where we took out the previous buttstock screws. Now we're going to take our long screws and kind of move this a little bit further forward here in our vise, and we are going to take the adapter. And they've got the nice little Rifle Dynamics logo there. And the flat portion of the adapter is going to be facing the front of the rifle. We're going to take our screws here, and there are two screw holes in the adapter. Screw is going to go right through there. And for this, we are going to need a 964th bit. And we are going to start one of our screws right in there. Make sure that you do not cross-thread these because we are installing steel screws into an aluminum adapter. One real quick trick for those of you guys that have not worked on a lot of machinery and stuff in the past, when you start a screw, back it off until you feel it click. When you feel it click, that's those threads lining up in there. And then after you feel that click, you can start running your screw forward. And you can engage the threads a whole lot quicker without worry of cross-threading anything. So we're going to go ahead and line that up. Grab our driver here. And we're not, I'm using a driver because it just makes things go a little bit quicker, but we are not cranking anything down at this point. We are just dry fitting everything, and then we are going to dry fit the receiver extension tube to make sure that lines up correctly and that we don't have anything really cranked off to one side or the other here. So we're going to grab our tube, and we're just going to thread that in. Just a couple of times just to make sure it is engaging the threads and then sight down everything and it it's straight and you see that comes straight off the back of the bore now so we are actually putting everything just like with an AR the rifle dynamics adapter puts the buttstock tube directly in line with the bore so that recoil impulse is going to come straight back we're not going to have any of that levering up kind of stuff now we're going to go ahead and remove our tube here. Now that we check that and everything lines up just fine, we are going to head and back these guys out. Your top mounting bolts. Going to throw a drop of Loctite on them and reinstall them. Loctite is your friend in this instance. We mentioned in the previous one. AKs are likely to see a lot of vibration, a lot of heat, so we want to make sure when we install this stuff that it's not going anywhere. 
we really do not want to modify an AK to be less reliable than it normally would be. Okay, and once we've got those Loctited, we just finish snugging them down. Not a ton of force, just nice and snug. Now we're ready to install our buttstock tube. Of course, we'll need a castle nut, and the notches on the castle nut are going to face to the rear. And we're going to go ahead and thread that on. and thread it a good ways back. Now we're going to add a little bit of difference on this. You can just go ahead and use a regular receiver extension lock plate like you would with any car stock or any uh, adjustable AR stock, but we're going to put a Noveski QD plate on this. And what this is going to allow us to do is use this nice QD receiver mounting point right here on the back of the rifle and because of the way the AK works that QD socket is not going to get in the way but it's going to allow us to use our Magpul MS4 sling on this rifle without any problems at all so we'll have a nice single point sling ability and if we want to do so in the future we can get a single point mount for the or not a single point a QD mount for the back of the stock and a QD mount for the front here and we can use the sling in two-point mode as well. Now there's a groove in the bottom of the tube here and we're just gonna match that up with the little tooth on the QD plate and the Noveski Iron Cross faces towards the back. So we'll slide that on and now just thread it in. I don't advocate using any Loctite on the threads in this process. Now, the adapter's bottomed out there, so we're going to come back until everything lines up, line our QD plate up, and then thread our castle nut down. Once we've got our castle nut threaded down, we are going to grab our AR stock wrench and we are going to snug that down. Now once you've snugged your castle nut down with the stock wrench, if you want some added security, and if this is going to be a combat weapon, then I would suggest doing so, you will notice that on your castle nut, you have notches to allow you to stake that castle nut in. Uh, staking in is nothing more than taking a punch and displacing metal into those notches. That way you don't have to worry about it backing off. You can put a drop of Loctite underneath the castle nut if you wish, alternately if you don't want to go displacing metal, but that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is staking it. If you have a castle nut that does not have staking grooves, you can either put it in by use of a file or a wheel, or you can go the Loctite method. Once we've got that on, we just need to install our Magpul stock. And to install the Magpul stock on your extension, you're just going to pull down on the little ears here and slide it forward. And it goes in. And now it's adjustable and it won't come off when you get to that last adjustment. Now you can see that once we have all this on here, that we are about an inch shorter than the standard stock length when the AK had its wood stock on but we can go considerably longer if we have a really long arm shooter or if we're shooting with optics. Now, of course, we need to reassemble the rifle. Now we have an updated AK. Now, one thing to bear in mind though, We'll go ahead and take the covers off of our TRS-25 here and sight in on it. And the cheek weld is a little bit low on the rifle. Uh, and that was something we expected. So we went ahead and ordered the 
riser from Magpul Industries. Now this riser is designed to go right on to the mow stock and it will work on a mow or a CTR stock. And that gives us quite a bit more cheek height now. So I can bring this out about to where I'd like it, sight in, and it's almost perfect. Now we kind of guesstimated on this so we could actually go with the next lower cheek riser for the Bushnell TRS-25 and we would be good to go. But this will work. If I was wearing a helmet and had that extra chin strap underneath there, I would definitely want the next lower version. But this also gives us the option if we wanted to put a QD mount between the Bushnell TRS-25 and the mount, we can do so. Now one last thing that we're gonna add on this rifle is a Magpul angled foregrip. Now this is a personal preference only kind of deal. Uh, you really, this is not required. You can go with a, a short vertical grip if you want. I like the angled foregrip. I have one on my M4. And so, so that we have a continuity between the two rifles that I use, I'm gonna go ahead and install an angled foregrip on this rifle. And it very simply just slides back onto the rail here. We'll push that on. We're gonna make sure that we line up one of the gaps in the rail. We're gonna run the mounting screw back through. Tighten it down, and that's all there is to it. So now we have a little bit cooler place to put our hand because this may heat up when we get into extended strings, we will see. And it really just gives me a better grip than I would have with just the rail itself. I just prefer these grips a little bit. I've been using them for a while uh, since Magpul first released them and they feel good to me. It's totally personal preference. It has no impact on the function of the rifle at all. If you like them, great. If not, you don't. Obviously we went with the FDE color because we went with that on the pistol grip and the stock. And we can't be that girl that's showing up to the dance with her handbag not matching her shoes, right? So that's all there is to install on that. That is our full improved AK upgrade. And you notice we have not changed the actual function of the rifle. It still functions like an AK. It still has an AK trigger. It still has an AK magazine release. We haven't put any funky uh, bolt stops or bolt releases or anything on there. And there's a reason behind that. I still want this to function like an AK. So when I'm training on this system, I'm training like an AK. If I have to switch back and pick up a bone stock rat grade AK off the ground, then all the controls are still going to be in the same place. It's going to feel a little different because it's not set up just like this AK is. But when I need to change the magazine, the magazine release is going to be in the same spot. When I need to rack the bolt, the bolt is still going to operate the same. If I need to operate the safety selector, it is still in the same place. It feels the same. So we haven't changed what makes an AK an AK. We've just tweaked the ergonomics a little bit so that they fit me better. We've changed the sighting system so that it works a little bit better in all weather conditions. Now the only thing left is to get this out to the range, get some trigger time on it, and see how our modifications work out. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed this episode in our Improved AK Build Series. If you have, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get out and shoot!